time. Miss City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Sanchez. Here. Councilmember Ibarra. Here. Councilmember Figueroa. Here. Okay. Councilmember Shurat. Here. Councilmember Nickel. Councilmember Nickel. I will watch for him so I can let him in if he joins. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Richard. I'm here. Councilmember Mulvihill. Here. And Mayor Valdivia. I'm here. Thank you, Ms. City Clerk. We'll excuse any staff member that doesn't need to be involved in our uh, closed session. If you please uh, exit stage right, we appreciate you. If uh, not, we'll take a few seconds to uh, terminate and end those calls and secure our lines. For the record, Mayor, I'm sorry for the interruption. There are no um, public comments for closed session. Thank you. All right. That, that's probably one of our first, but thank you. meeting of the mayor and city council this time uh, we will go ahead and um, say our pledge of allegiance I'm going to ask councilman Mulvihill oh sir can you lead us in the pledge of allegiance certainly you all stand please and face the flag whichever direction you feel it's in and begin I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America for the Republic, which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. City Attorney, is there anything to report in closed session? No, there is no reportable action there. All right, moving on to our presentations tonight. Um, hold on just a minute. Okay, yeah, it's presentations and we'll do a community survey results. Ms. Ledoux? Uh, Mayor, did you want to do public comments first? I was looking at that. The way it's structured, it says um, it comes after presentation, so. Oh, all right. Well, then let's, uh, let's go in the order of the agenda then. <laughs> Mayor and Council, uh, as you might recall, during the strategic planning session last year, we had our consultants for the tax measure consultants and the polling consultants came and gave you the um, update on the community survey that they had done in August. Uh, they are back this evening. They've done a follow-up survey. They did it at the end of May, and they would like to provide the results of that survey to you this evening. And I'm going to introduce Adam Sodensen, Chin Sign with uh, FM3, and I believe that uh, John Fairbanks is also on the call. Um, yeah, he may be, and this is Adam Sunshine with FM3. I'm going to uh, lead you through these uh, survey results, and, and then at the end, we will be happy to take your comments and questions. So um, if we could go ahead and, and go into the first slide, I'll just take you right into uh, the survey results, starting with the methodology so you understand how we did this survey. Uh, the surveys were completed by a random sample of 437 residents of the city of San Bernardino, who are considered likely to vote in the November 2020 election based on their past voting history. The survey was conducted in two modes, one online and one by phone, both cell phones and landlines to give people more opportunities to participate and was uh, conducted from May 30th uh, through June 3rd of this year, which just for point of reference was obviously um, a very interesting time in the city, a lot going on uh, in late May, early June, um, but just so, so bear that in mind as you look at some of these results. Um, margin of error, plus or minus about 5%, 4.9% on the, on the full sample. Survey interviews were uh, conducted in both English and Spanish. Sometimes you might see something that doesn't quite add up to 100% because we've rounded decimal points to add things up. And then in, in a few occasions, we have some questions we've asked previously, both in 2019 and then all the way back in 2007, although I don't think there's any 2007 results in this slide deck. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so beginning with just some general community attitudes that we like to assess as part of a 
a survey like this. So we have more context than just uh, would you vote yes, would you vote no on some sort of a ballot measure. So if you go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, one of the, the most important findings for us is that uh, perceptions of the city's need for additional funding remain extraordinarily high. Uh, this is a, 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 a conceptual question that we find to be important to uh, understand people's need for funding. And uh, back in August when we did this survey for you, it was 88% who's perceived a great or some need. The current moment, it's 83. So while it's down a couple of points, it's still a very, very high level, among the highest that we would find uh, in various communities around the state. So in, an important early sign that there's still an openness to some sort of revenue measure for the city. Next slide, please. Uh, while that uh, said, and we see a, a sense of, of a need for funding, it's also significant concern about the direction of the local economy. Um, we asked two questions here. One, do you think that the city's economy will be getting better, getting worse, or staying about the same? Um, we found 24% said they thought things would be getting better over the next year or so. Double that said they thought things would be getting worse, 47%, um, with only about 22% who say they think things will stay about the same over the next year. On the right-hand side of the slide, you see the, the same question, but asking about their own personal financial situation. Um, about 30% think that their actual personal financial situation will get better over the next year. Another 51% who think things will stay about the same, only 11% who say things will get worse. Now, that's not necessarily all um, sunny and optimism. That's also perhaps a sign that people have already started to feel the impact of uh, the COVID crisis on the economy, they've, they've lost jobs or they've lost hours or wages. And so they perceive that over the next year, their own situation may be improving as some of the economy starts to reopen. Next slide, please. Um, again, two, two questions on the same, on the same uh, slide here. We're asking people two questions about uh, both the pandemic and from a health perspective and then the economy. On the top of the slide, we've asked them, do they think that in either a few weeks or in six months, the coronavirus pandemic will generally be under control or not? Um, we see that nearly uh, half say it will not be under control, uh, even within six months. Um, only 36% say it will be under control in six months. 28% who think it might be under control within a few weeks of, of when we did the survey. When we look at the economy and, and the, the recovery of the, of the local economy, there's even less optimism that that will happen in that uh, either few week or, or six month time period. 13% think the local economy will have recovered in a few weeks. 76% perceive a long term uh, or longer term need for economic recovery. 65% who see that that uh, economic recovery will take longer than six months even. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, here we've offered people two options about uh, social distancing and the closure of businesses in the city of San Bernardino. We find six in 10 voters uh, say they're more concerned that social distancing will end too soon, prolong the academic, uh, epidemic, endangering the economy and putting lives at risk compared to about half that number who are more concerned that social distancing will go on and cause unnecessary damage uh, to the economy and residents' livelihood, as well as another 10% that are not sure which one of these is the bigger concern for them. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so that's all the, the background. And now we get into uh, kind of the meat of, or heart of the issue, which is the opinions on revenue uh, ballot measures. We go to the next slide. Um, here is uh, the sales tax measure ballot question that we tested in the survey. It's actually the, the same question that we used in the August 2019 survey. Um, you see the title there. Uh, San Bernardino City Services slash public safety measure and the in, in total the 75 words that we're allowed to use to describe the measure. Uh, some of the potential services that could be funded, obviously this would be a general purpose measure, so it'd be up to council discretion. Uh, it, and then that you've got, you can see the services, you can see it would be extending the city's uh, sales tax at a 1% rate would provide approximately $40 million until ended by voters with some of the accountability provisions at the end. The reason we put this together is that we find the best way to assess the viability of uh, a ballot measure in a survey like this is to put together the hypothetical ballot question that voters uh, would uh, interact with when they vote either by mail or in person and use that as a, 
as a, as a placeholder, as a guidepost to tell us how they would view this kind of measure work to be on the ballot. Obviously, this is uh, ultimately the council's decision of what the language uh, here in, in consultation with your city attorney and others. If you go ahead to the next slide, it, here you're seeing the, the results on this initial test of the ballot measure back in August of 2019 and today. So uh, if we focus on the right-hand side for a moment, we find two-thirds of respondents supporting this sales tax measure on the initial reading, 24% uh, who said that they would vote no, 10% who were undecided. Now, just so you understand the different parts of this chart here, when we do the survey, we ask people if they would vote yes or no, and then we follow that up if they say they would vote yes or no with, uh, is that definitely or probably yes, or is that definitely or probably no, um, to understand the level of intensity with which people hold these opinions. So it's more than just, yeah, I'm thinking about it, but I'm definitely voting yes, or I'm definitely voting no. And then those people who say that uh, they're not sure how they're voting initially, we follow up with them and say, well, do you lean towards voting yes? Do you lean towards voting no? Um, so what we find is that uh, in your case, nearly 40 percent are, are in that kind of committed definitely yes uh, uh, column compared to only 13 percent who say they would definitely vote no. So a three to one ratio of definitely yes to definitely no. And to get to that 66, we're only actually looking at about three percent of what we call leaning voters, voters who uh, initially are undecided, but they lean towards voting yes. Now, uh, in comparison to the August 2019 numbers, uh, in the overall, it's a couple points down, but we think that that's likely due to all of the factors that have been impacting people over the last several months. You saw the concerns about the economy and to maybe to a lesser degree, people's own personal finances. And along with the, the many other things swirling uh, in the environment, that may lead to a small decrease in support. But if you look at the definitely and probably in those boxes there, definitely yes, probably yes, it was 64 in August, it's 63 today, statistically not a lot of difference. So your voters have maintained a high level of interest in supporting this kind of measure uh, at this point in the survey. Next slide, please. Um, just to, for your information, uh, here's the, the breakdown by uh, city council uh, district. You can see that across the city, support said at least 60%, rising up to 77% in certain parts of the city. Next slide, please. Okay, so one of the things we also wanted to do is look at some of the individual level priorities for city funding. So if the city were to uh, have this measure approved by voters, how would voters prioritize the money being spent? So if you go to the next slide, I can show you the, the, some of the top of the list items. Um, the highest priorities, including protecting local businesses and jobs, addressing homelessness, um, responding to emergencies, and maintaining public safety. Um, we circled here preventing reductions to police response because of the fact that uh, in your community and many others, there has been discussion about whether the city should invest less resources into uh, police services. In this case, voters, at least at the time of the survey, um, continue to view that as a, as a high priority uh, to prevent reductions to police response. You can also see um, that there's a number of, of different items here. There's public safety, there's, there's kind of local economy, there's homelessness, so a number of features that uh, voters would consider to be important. Uh, and the other thing to point out is that all of these are rated very, very highly um, with over 80% calling them extremely or very important and nearly half of voters calling them extremely important. That's the darker blue first set of bars there. Uh, we go from there to very important and then after that somewhat and after that not too important. So among these items, the top priorities are very, very high compared to uh, even other communities uh, when we ask similar kinds of questions. So uh, something that's a sign, again, that voters are open and interested to this kind of measure. Next slide, which will be continuing the same question, um, but with some different items, the next kind of tier of items uh, heading down the list. Um, we split sampled, meaning we asked different people some different questions, and we, you saw earlier protecting local businesses and jobs. We also asked retaining and attracting businesses, which the prioritization level was uh, still very high, but maybe just a touch below what you saw earlier on the previous slide. Um, street repairs, street and pothole repair services, 
improving city services generally without being specific about what those services are. That's at almost 80 percent. Extremely are very important, as well as uh, preventing reductions to anti-gang and prostitution prevention programs, making parks, including restrooms and drinking fountains, cleaner and safer, and maintaining streetlights. All these above three quarters of voters saying these are extremely or very important priorities for them. Next slide, please. Just a second. Thank you. Uh, so after we provide this, uh, the, the, our, our voters tell us what their priorities are. We want to provide them with some information so that they, they understand more of from the, the city's perspective and the community perspectives about why the measure is important. Uh, so if you keep going to the next slide, please. Um, we, we provided some informational statements and asked voters to tell us if those statements made them more inclined to support this uh, ballot measure, uh, asking them specifically if it made them much more inclined or somewhat more inclined, which you see in the dark blue and the lighter blue here. Um, the most impactful messages about the measure um, reference roads, uh, public safety, and accountability, fiscal accountability. Um, those uh, little code words there in parentheses are just for uh, our own discussion. They're not part of the survey language, but you can see the, the statements that were provided uh, that, uh, it, it, and up front, uh, while we saw streets and roads as a high priority, wasn't the highest. When we give them this information about independent pavement management engineers rating nearly 80% of the roads as either poor or very poor and the cost of, of uh, getting them all up to established standards, we see that 82% of respondents said that made them much more inclined or somewhat more inclined to support the measure. So a very, very high uh, response. Another sign, again, of prioritization of, of this kind of funding. When we look at uh, public safety, maintaining police services, which is specifically mentioned in that uh, statement, 75% uh, responded that that made them more inclined to support the measure. And then fiscal accountability, the kinds of things that uh, the, the city uh, knows it will do inherently in this kind of ballot measure. All the spending will be disclosed publicly. There'll be audits. There'll be a committee. Um, but voters don't necessarily know that. So it's important to remind them of that fact, which is what we've done in this statement. Go to the next slide. Again, continuing the same question with some additional points. Uh, the next tier maybe of, of statements in terms of their resonance was generally about quality of life and the kinds of services that would be strengthened for San Bernardino, uh, the need to uh, have good emergency response services for public health and catastrophic emergencies, including emergency communication systems, and then protecting kids from gangs and drugs, anti-gang drug prevention programs, at-risk youth, families, after-school programs, et cetera. You find that in the, in the, the final message on this page Again, all of these testing at fairly high levels in some communities, we don't see any statements where the much more or somewhat more inclined numbers reach 70%. In your case, we have several who do. Next slide, please. Now, we also provided in some of the opposition, the standard reasons that you know people oppose <coughs> local revenue ballot measures, such as um, the increase in taxes and the, the current environment as it relates to the virus and, and how that would make people less supportive. And as we saw in the baseline survey, um, after this exchange of information, the measure remains above the majority vote threshold. You need 50% plus one for this kind of uh, measure. Although it's notable that it does decrease in support um, from 69 down to 60. So the opposition increases from 24 to 28. And you see that was basically the same pattern that we saw in August where there was some some list in, in the level of support after the informational statements and then a decrease after opposition. So clearly uh, these statements resonate with people. They're concerned about these factors, but there's still support above the level that's necessary for the measure to pass. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, now we know that in, in your case in November of 2020, you may have some other competing measures or interested measure, measures on the ballot. So we did wanna assess some of those opinions as well and give you a quick snapshot of how people are feeling about those. So if you go to the next slide, um, this is just a, a quick little look at how we structured the survey. For half the folks, we, we took them through the um, what we call the split role or schools and communities first measure that uh, has collected enough signatures to be on the ballot, but it's not yet clear for sure that it will be. Perhaps there will still be uh, some sort of a compromise in Sacramento. Then for everybody, we had the, the county fire protection tax repeal measure. 
uh, that we, we wanted to test. We tested the city sales tax, which you've been looking at for the last few minutes. And then for the other half of the sample, we did a hypothetical version of a, of a service user's tax reduction so that we the city would have some perspective on how voters think about that, uh, should it be on the ballot. Obviously, we, at this point, or at least at the time of the survey, that was not clear that it would be the case. So we go to the next slide. I'll take you through some of these other measures that you hadn't seen before. Uh, nearly 6 in 10 uh, voters in San Bernardino are, are supportive of the split role ballot measure, the schools and communities first ballot measure relating to commercial property tax based on the uh, the uh, ballot uh, question, the title and summary, the state title, official title and summary, um, which, as you may have seen, uh, very specifically calls out that it increases funding for local governments along with uh, education programs. So we did want to be mindful of that. That measure will be before yours on the ballot. So that's why we tested it in the way that we did. Um, and, and this is actually quite a high level of support compared to many of the other communities where uh, Supports a little bit lower than, than nearly 60. Next slide, please. Um, we did a, a draft version of a fire protection tax repeal measure. We don't have official language, but just kind of putting our, our best guess of what that language would look like. We found 40% of voters in the city, obviously the city not being the entirety of the district that would vote on this measure, but 40% of the city voters said that they would vote yes. 50% said that they would vote no. Um, now, 10% are un purely undecided, and another 9% are in that lean yes, lean no. So close to 19, 20% who are at least initially undecided. And one of the things we find often when it comes to measures that repeal existing taxes is that there's some confusion about, uh, as you read the ballot question, what a yes vote means and what a no vote means. Does a yes vote mean I'm keeping the funding, does a no vote mean I'm keeping the tax? It, it, it often happens. And I'm just going to show you on the next slide. Um, we don't want to be over, we're not trying to be overly partisan about this, but this is the vote on that fire protection repeal measure by political party. And what jumps off the page is how consistent it is. The Democrats, independents, and Republicans uh, all have nearly equal opinions on this measure, which says one of two things. Either it's one of the only things that has cross-party unanimity that everybody agrees on, regardless of their political party, uh, or there's some confusion about what the, about the way that, that uh, voters should interpret this measure and what a yes vote means and what a no vote means. That's our, that's our hypothesis. We did not ask people why. We didn't have that uh, capability in the survey um, to find out why they, they are voting yes or why they're voting no, but that would be our, our suspicion. Okay, next slide, please. Um, on the, uh, the the service users tax reduction measure, again, putting our best guess of what that language would look like, we find a small majority oppose the measure, 52% who said they would vote no, compared to 35 who would vote yes. Interestingly, also, the intensity of that no vote is up at 31%, definitely no, compared to 18% who said that they would definitely vote yes. And this is another version of kind of a repeal, although it's reducing the rate. Um, and we see also in this case a fairly high level of undecided voters compared to some of the other questions. It was 13 purely undecided, seven who are undecided but leaning. Okay. Um, next slide, please. So in conclusion, just to give you kind of our sense of, of, of what these results all mean, if you go to the next slide, uh, what we find is that uh, a renewal of the San Bernardino City sales tax at a one cent rate is viable placed on the November 2020 ballot. There's sufficient voter support for it should you choose to do that. There's high initial support, which increases after information. Uh, and and the, the, the fact that it increases and the fact that there's the, the uh, some, some amount of variation in people's opinion over the course of the survey shows that communication with voters and stakeholders is important for the purpose of educating the public about the city's needs and how the measure addresses those needs. We see already a high level of, of opinions of the city's need for funding, but what's the correlation between uh, the measure and those needs, which is uh, kind of the third point here, uh, extraordinarily high sense that the city, uh, city needs additional funding among the highest that we've seen in recent years. Um, support for the sales tax is slightly lower than what we saw in August of 2019, maybe at the kind of the, mar the edges of that margin of error, likely because of a combination of 
A, the fact that we discussed several other ballot measures in the survey, which sometimes uh, dings a, a measure by a couple points, strong con levels of concern about the, the coronavirus pandemic, the associated health impacts, and the effect on the economy. So you've got a number of things kind of swirling together within the survey, which might have led to a, a small decrease. And on the next slide, just to finish up. That's it. Five. Um, is there Thank one more you. slide or no? No. Oh, well, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, I want to, uh, first off, um, frame um, and encourage our city council members. This is a uh, receive and file presentation. Um, and I want to also send my deep appreciation to Councilman Nickel, Councilman Charette, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez for sitting on the Finance uh, Economic Ad Hoc Committee. Um, we appreciate your um, time and dedication in assessing and synthesizing a lot of this information. You guys have been busy at work on um, really understanding this deeply, and so we appreciate it. Um, we want to be very cautious on our uh, levels of commitment on this matter tonight. Um, maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Rice, our city attorney, um, a couple of reminders would be helpful. Absolutely, Mayor. Thank you very much for that. I think it's prudent to caution council in this area. Obviously, this is informational only. Uh, these are responses to a survey uh, that citizens have provided uh, on their initial views of, of a measure should one come forward. Council at this time has not taken action on a measure, has not directed staff to bring a measure forward. If that were to happen, uh, but, you know, I'll be issuing some more stricter uh, guidelines at that time for council members uh, about the importance that the city council and the mayor and uh, city staff not engage in advocacy uh, for any such measure. So we'll, we'll be very careful on that as we move forward, but this is really important information for making those decisions. And obviously what the mayor said is really important, thanking those council members who put time in uh, and effort into this, into pulling this analysis together. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rice. We appreciate it. With that, let's go ahead and move on to um, the public comments portion of tonight's meet. Yeah, Councilman Charette. I, I just have one quick question of Adam. I may have. Adam, are you still my, there? You though, are. My screen, though my screen is blocked out, I was watching. I was sitting right here watching. Uh, but I, but what what date is is this information? Is this from when? What what was the date of this? survey uh, may 30th was the first date and i believe the end date is june 3rd okay so okay i i was interested in how it might uh coincide with some of what's going on nationally right now and and the for lack of a better term the unrest that's going on with the communities across the country and i just wondered if that was any anything significant at all um this came out just just after, but really kind of uh, before, correct? Um, so I think at the time you, your city had experienced some of uh, the unrest, even in fact, I think while the survey was in the, in the data collection process. Um, I'll say just as a caveat, any survey is a snapshot in time, right? So we've got uh, an, a, a snapshot of voters' opinions at the time we took the survey, um, as we've seen the past few months, things can change quickly uh, in voter attitudes. But in the overall, as we look at these results and compare them back to August, even despite all that's happened in 2020, uh, we still see fairly consistent attitudes, both on the measure and, again, as I mentioned earlier, the sense that the, the city needs additional funding. Now, as things evolve over the course of the next Weeks and months, you know, might opinions change? They they might. We we don't we don't we don't have that crystal ball as part of this survey. I get it, and I thank you very much for your efforts, and uh, thanks to my colleagues on the committee and and for all the staff reporting and staff work on this. Thank you. All right. And thank you for your partnership. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and move on to public comments. Uh, Ms. City Clerk, are you? We have two public comments. All right, if you'd please uh, go ahead. Public comment for Treasurer T's open session. Council, as you guys address the budget again, probably for the last time, 
The employees of the city have been asked to make concessions. They have been asked to vote on whether they're going to reduce their pay or take layoffs, reduce hours. And what I have yet to see is the fake city manager, Terry Ledeau, step up and take a pay cut. We cannot afford a $260,000 city manager, let alone someone who is willing to ask employees to sacrifice when she's not willing to. We are on the brink of financial failure. And we, in the long term, cannot afford to pay a city manager over $165,000 a year. We can't afford to pay a police chief over $140,000 a year. And no director should be making over $100,000 a year. We just can't afford it. It's not that they're not capable of the work. We have a city where the average income is less than $42,000 a year. The top 28 earners of our city reside in the police department and make $10 million combined in salary and benefits. Check Transparent California. What I'm telling you guys is that we are breaking. We have a lack of leadership. And if you're not willing to take the salaries from the top to account for the largest portion of our budget, the impact to PERS, then why are you asking the least earners to take the largest sacrifice? And that has been consistently the problem in the city of San Bernardino, that employees have been asked to carry over the mess that is caused by mismanagement, by corruption. The mayor should be cutting his salary. The council needs to cut their salary. What is happening in San Bernardino is a disgrace, much like the mayor and the city manager. If you cannot do your job, then step away. If you refuse to sacrifice, just like the residents and the employees continue to sacrifice services and their dollars, then don't be here anymore. And it's time for the council to step up. Eliminate the assistant chief of police. We don't need it. Reduce the salary of the chief of police. Reduce the salary of the city manager. Start managing for the future because you've kicked the can down the road to December and we know it. And it's time to look at outsourcing the police department because with the loss of liability insurance, we can no longer afford this department. We can't pay for anything if something goes wrong with them. The county sheriff may be our only option at this point. I really hope you guys ask your question, make them face the reality of what's going on. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and City Council. I am Damon Alexander. I am here to share about the city manager's evaluation. So let me cut to the chase. Article 4, title, City Manager, Section 400, last two sentences, read, the mayor and the council shall establish and communicate clear expectations for the city manager. An evaluation of the city manager's performance shall, and I shall underline and bold, shall be conducted at least annually. The Oxford's diction definition of shall is expressing an instruction, command, or obligation. Now, those who voted not to give the city manager her annual review, Councilman Charette, the Shard, Councilman Jim Mulvihill, you put the city in possible legal jeopardy. I do risk mitigation. You guys open up the city to possible legal action in the future by not doing what the charter says. Please, this is called risk management. Do what the charter says and govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you and have a good night. And that concludes the public comments that were left. Thank you, Ms. City Clerk. Okay, let's get into our um, issue of tonight. And the matter before us is the approval of the fiscal year 2021 proposed operating budget capital improvement program appropriation limit calculation, the fiscal year 2021-21 uh, salary schedule. There are five recommendations from the staff and we'll turn it over to uh, Ms. City Manager. 
Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. We appreciate your time this evening as we finalize the budget. As you know, we've been working on this for several meetings, and I want to thank all of you for taking the time, especially this past Monday, to go over the final budget recommendations um, with Assistant City Manager Rebecca Kramer and I. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our Finance Director and Budget Officer to go over the proposed budget um, as a result of the actions you've taken to date and to guide you through the actions being requested of you this evening. Um, before I turn it over to them, I'd like to note that the fiscal year um, noted in the recommendation on your staff report should be 20 2021, just like it says on the screen, um, and the resolution is correct. It's, it's just wrong on the staff report. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul and uh, Dixon. Good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. I uh, hope you can hear me okay. Um, before you this evening is the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget. Our presentation will cover our opening remarks, our background of past meetings. If you would go to the next slide, please. Uh, general fund summary, uh, CIP summary, our next steps and our 10 year forecast. Next slide. If the mayor and city council will recall, our proposed budget reflected an operating deficit of about $10.2 million. The mayor and city council approved a series of budget recommendations and one-time revenue sources on May 21st and June 2nd. This helped to bring our budget deficit down by $7.2 million. On June 17th, the mayor and city council approved the change in the lease agreement with Van Eer. That further reduced our deficit from $3 million down to $2.8 million. At this time, the city is undergoing negotiations with each of the city's bargaining units, but with the restricted time frame, we were unable to reach agreements at this time. Next slide, please. This schedule reflects a summary of our general fund revenues. As you can see, our 2021 preliminary budget reflected general fund revenues of about $132.9 million. After taking into consideration the impacts, the financial impacts of COVID-19 on our general fund revenues, our revenues dropped to $124 million. Uh, through the past budget meetings, Council has approved $3.7 million in budget recommendations that include the following. An increase to our passport revenues of $50,000, an increase to our fee study of $967,000, additional cannabis tax revenue of $1 million, transfers from funds 242 and 123 in total of $1.4 million, and a transfer of evidence funds in the amount of $287,000. This helped to mitigate our drop in revenues and overall our preliminary budget was originally at 132.9 and now our general fund revenues for the 2021 fiscal year are amounting to roughly $127.8 million. Next slide please. Over the past few months staff has provided deficit reduction recommendations that has uh, decreased our general fund expenditures by $3.9 million, just under $4 million. As you can see in this slide, our preliminary budget reflected a general fund expenditure total of $134.3 million. Approved actions prior to, uh, from our prior meetings had reduced our budget by $3.9 million. And of course, if you look at the next column, we have a reallocation of our internal service fund charges and our unfunded actuarial PERS liability. Our internal fund, uh, internal service fund charges and our CalPERS unfunded liability are allocated departments based on the number of positions and the, the amount of salary and benefits allocated to each department. Um, because of our reductions from the uh, May 21st and June 2nd meetings have impacted both the number of positions and um, salary and benefits, we had to do a reallocation of both our internal service funds and our actuarial accrued liability, our unfunded liability. Overall, our general fund preliminary expenditure budget of 134.3 is now reduced to about $130.7 million. Next slide, please. Uh, this table reflects a summary of our budget reduction measures. Uh, these measures include, uh, again, our fee study revenue increase of 967,000, addition of cannabis revenue, cost of cannabis law enforcement, transfers from the 123 and 242 fund of 820,000 and 644,000 respectively, the use of our cultural development fund of 774,000, excuse me, transfer of general fund uh, public works costs to our gas tax 
fund of 455,000 and transfer of evident funds to our general funding amount of 287,000. Uh, departmental reductions included the following. Uh, I'm just gonna name the uh, department and the amount of the, the budget reduction. Uh, city attorney's office, 102,000. City clerk's office, 29,000. City manager's office, 702,000. Community and economic development, 81,000. Uh, finance, 152,000. General government, uh, reduction to, uh, which included a reduction in our van release of 128,000. Parks, 43,000. Police, 767,000. Animal control, 119,000. And our public works department of 636,000. Overall, uh, we're looking at uh, budget reduction plans that amounted to about $7.3 million. Next slide, please. This table reflects the status of our general fund reserves, and I'll go through this quickly. But in 1920, it's, it's interesting to see that overall, we were looking at a surplus when the budget was adopted at $56,000. 2019, our last quarter of our fiscal year, we came to council with an update based on the financial impact of COVID-19 to the city's general fund revenues and expenditures. And overall, we were looking at a about a $5.1 million deficit in the current fiscal year. This brought down our um, beginning fund balance of 29.2 down to $24.1 million. Categorically, our emergency reserve fund is still holding at about 19 million, but we had to dip into our economic contingency reserve, which brought our overall reserves down to $24.1 million. Now, if we take that and move into our next budget year, our preliminary budget reflected as you can see, the beginning fund balance of 24.1, but based on the, the impacts of COVID-19 to our, our income, we're looking at a $10.2 million deficit in the next fiscal year, and we've, we've gone over that extensively. Um, overall, that would pretty much wipe out our economic contingency reserve and reduce our emergency reserve significantly. However, before you this evening, we're proposing our fiscal year 2021 proposed budget, and this now reflects estimated revenues of 127 million, which we just covered, and a reduction in our estimated expenditures overall, bringing our $10.2 million deficit down to about $2.8 million. It took a lot of work to get to this point, but we're not done. Um, overall, the, the impact of the budget on our reserves is as follows. We're still holding our emergency uh, contingency reserve about 19 million, but as you can see here, staff is recommending a reduction in our economic contingency reserve, bringing that down to about 1.6. And that is before you this evening. Next slide, please. This is a quick summary of our CIP summary, um, our CIP uh, budget, by the way. As presented at the June 10th council meeting, um, our 2021 CIP budget is broken down as follows. Streets taking up the lion's share of our uh, CIP budget at 11.6 million. Parks, 2.7 million. Storm drains, 950,000. Traffic controls, 2.9 million. And buildings at $1.2 million. Next slide, please. For the fiscal year 2021, our operating budget, um, staff is recommending the use of the economic contingency reserve in order to adopt this budget. We had just covered that. Council has requested the motion to cut certain accounts in the mayor's office and council office be brought back for reconsideration and that will be brought to you this evening. Once again, um, our agreements have uh, with our bargaining groups are not final and staff will return uh, after the beginning of the fiscal year with reductions in order to help um, balance this budget. But at this time, staff is recommending the use of one-time contingency, economic contingency reserves until we can finalize our, our bargaining and group discussions. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you Dixon. Uh, Dixon, I'm not going to try and say the name. I get it wrong every time. But Dixon will walk you through our 10-year budget cuts, our 10-year forecast. Dixon? Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as we have done in our previous budget meetings, uh, I'll be providing you an update on our city's 10-year financial plan. Um, for this presentation, we'll be showing the impacts of uh, Measure Z expiring, uh, Measure Z being renewed at the current rate, and Measure Z being renewed um, at one at one percent. Uh, we'll also look at the potential uh, impact of the UUT budget measure. Um, the current slide that we're looking at uh, is reflecting uh, what happens uh, when Measure Z expires. 
uh, as we all know, it's expiring on April 20, 2022. Um, what that means for revenues is that we're only going to receive revenue revenues for uh, for the first uh, three quarters. Um, if you look at the first, if you look at the chart, uh, we can see that in fiscal year 21-22, um, our fund balance is decreasing to 20 to 12.9 million, and then by fiscal year 22-23, uh, it's decreasing to about 3.4 million. Uh, and by fiscal year 27, 28, uh, it's decreasing to, uh, to 92 million. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in this, um, this chart reflects uh, if Measure Z is renewed at the current rate of uh, 0.25. Um, as you can see, uh, by fiscal year 23, 24, um, our fund balance is decreasing to, uh, to, to about a million dollars. And again, by fiscal year 27, 28, uh, it has decreased uh, to 36.3 million. Next slide, please. Um, in this slide, uh, if Measure Z is renewed um, at, uh, at one cent, uh, we can see that uh, by fiscal uh, by the end by the end of this uh, by the end of the upcoming fiscal year 2021, uh, we end the year with 27.6 million. Um, a lot of that has to do uh, with the fact that if Measure Z does get approved uh, in, in November, um, our first allocation is in June of, uh, of, of, uh, of, 20, of uh, 2021. Uh, it means we're, we'll be receiving uh, an additional uh, $8.4 million in revenue for a total of about $14.4 million. Uh, for fiscal year 21-22, uh, the city will be receiving an additional uh, $25.1 million uh, for a total of $33.4 million in Measure Z revenues. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these next three slides, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the impact of the UUT uh, ballot measure. Um, if the UUT is, uh, is reduced from the current rate of 7.75% uh, uh, to 3 to 3%, uh, the city uh, stands to lose an estimated $14, uh, $14 million in revenue. Uh, in the current slide we're looking at, um, uh, we can see that uh, you see we can see that by fiscal year uh, by fiscal year 2022, our fund balance is decreasing to about 1.3 million, and then by by fiscal year 2728, our uh, fund balance would have decreased to uh, to uh, to a negative 192 million. Next slide, please. In this slide, again, uh, by fiscal year 22-23, uh, our fund balance is decreasing to a negative 21.4 million and to about 135 million by, uh, by fiscal year 27-28. Uh, next slide, please. Um, for this slide, again, if Measure Z uh, is renewed um, and the UUT uh, measure um, passes, uh, the city is still going to maintain uh, a healthy uh, fund balance throughout, the, uh, throughout the, uh, the duration of the plan. Uh, that's um, I, that's the end of my presentation. We're free to take any questions. Hi, Mayor. Okay, Dixon, thank you very much. Uh, does that conclude uh, staff's presentation? Mayor, we have one more uh, one more slide, I believe. Okay. I know uh, Dixon was asking if we had any questions, and I just want to commend him for providing us with these uh, sales tax measures, how they impact our city. Thank you, Dixon. All right. Uh, staff, if you please uh, proceed with your your uh, final slide. Very well, Mayor. Uh, tonight, uh, this excuse me, before you this evening, we have a few recommendations to, to have council move forward. Number one is to adopt resolution. 2020-128 of the Mayor and City Council of the City of San Bernardino, approving the City of San Bernardino's operating budget and capital improvement program for the fiscal year 2021, and establishing the city's appropriation limit as required by Article 8 of the California State Constitution, authorizing the Finance Director to amend the 2021 budget to fund the recruit recruitment costs for department director positions as needed, using salary savings from these positions. Number two, adopt resolution 2020-129 of the Mayor and City Council of the City of San Bernardino, California, amending the salary schedule for full-time non-safety classifications of the City of San Bernardino for fiscal years 2021. 
item number three, rec uh, reconsider uh, the June 2nd, 20 motion to reduce the office of the city council's budget by 25,000 in part-time salaries and 28,000 in meetings and conferences for an actual a total cost of 53,000 in the general fund budget reductions and amend the fiscal year 2021 to reflect these changes. Number four, reconsider uh, the June 2nd motion to reduce the office of the mayor's budget by $12,200 in meetings and conferences and eliminate the state of the city address totaling $20,000 from the cultural development fund and amend the fiscal year 2021 budget to reflect these changes. Lastly, direct staff to return council to return to the mayor and city council in July with additional measures to address the projected deficit for the fiscal year 2021 deficit. At this time, uh, this concludes our budget presentation. Staff will uh, be happy to take any questions, concerns, or comments the city council may have at this time. Okay, mayor. thank you very mayor. much, um, Ms., uh, Mr. Espinosa. And I want to just say thank you very much. We've had a uh, quite a few workshops and meetings, and I want to say thank you to our staff. Um, you have done the very best to present uh, all of the finances of the city, and uh, we appreciate your hard, hard work. Councilman Figueroa. Yeah, thank you. I, I wasn't sure if I was clicking the button here. I'd like to go ahead and just make the motion to approve all the uh, the five staff recommendations that are that were presented tonight. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Um, Councilman Molio. Yeah, um, Paul, on your recommendations, number four is, Paul? Uh, recommendation number four is reconsider the motion to reduce the office of the mayor's budget by 12200 and eliminate the uh, state of the city address totaling 20000 are you saying to reinstate those figures? I, no, Paul, no, sir, I'm I, not. Paul, if right. I may, Paul, if you don't mind, I'll just remind the council that council member Hibara had asked us to bring this back at a future meeting. Uh, so we put it back on the agenda at her request. Okay. Yeah. But we're still maintaining the cuts in the mayor's meeting conferences and the state of the city. The cuts if, there. If you vote yes on those motions, that's what you would be doing. Okay. That is my motion. Okay. Uh, well, ne never mind. Uh, I got another question to think for Paul. In term on uh, plate number five, with regard to the preliminary budget, you had mentioned that the benefits, uh, there was something on retirements in there. Like well, I see it's right there, the unfunded. Yes, sir. Okay. I was, wondering, I, I was looking for it being in the column there, and I, it wasn't there, so that, I see it's on the uh, footnote. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilman Mulvihill. Councilman Nickel. Yeah, a couple of questions. Um, I know in our CIP budget, we allocated a certain portion of cultural development uh, GIF funding uh, to a number of projects. Uh, is it possible that we uh, put those projects on hold and allocate that cultural fund money to the libraries and or other programs uh, within the budget that qualify uh, for that cultural development fund uh, 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 money? Is it possible to do that? Absolutely. If the council so desires, we could do that. I don't have the number right off the top of my head. Um, and I, Chris just popped up. Yeah, and I think what I'd like to do is just put those those projects on hold until such time as um, we, we get back to um, a position where we can fund those projects. So what would be the detriment of putting those potential projects on hold to patch this hole in our budget? So good evening, Mayor and members of council. Based on what I am looking at, and I believe it is the most current um, printed uh, CIP budget, it appears that those projects include the in Canto Community Center improvements, um, phase one improvements, Delman Heights Community Center upgrades, Fifth Street Senior Center upgrades, and upgrades to the Paris Hill Senior Center 
for parking and lighting. Um, I'm showing a total of a million dollars um, that have been uh, allotted to that. The, the one comment that I would make, um, the Encanto Community Center, which I believe is our um, Boys and Girls Club, and Alex might need to verify that for me. Um, we do have a tenant, the county, in there right now. There are definitely upgrades that are needed to that center desperately. Um, so in, in removing this funding from that particular project, we would definitely be need to look look at another funding source um, to to move forward with the improvements needed at that center. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just, you know, I, I think we need to look everywhere we can um, to sustain our operating budget this year. And uh, I get it. I mean, these are tough decisions, but um, if there's that opportunity, I don't know if that means that we have to bring back the CIP budget or amend that budget or how that works. Um, but uh, um, I think I think it warrants some consideration uh, given the circumstance we're in. Uh, what would I be the comment. appropriate action? Yeah, I, and I'll 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 defer to uh, Council Member Richard. Yes, thank thank you. And yes, I I will not support that. I think that um, we have the county in the in the Encanto Center, and we need there's there's no air conditioner in there. There's a lot of repairs that need to be done in there. And then it, again, the Delman Heights Community Center, they don't always want to be the one that always uh, uh, cry or moan, but every time there's something that happens, you know, it, it always affects, and not just only, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of things that need to be fixed in the city board. And every time we have a budget problem, they always get thrown to the side. And then on top of that, when it's time to redo it, then all of a sudden something becomes more important. And so with, it, with that being said, I am not in agreement um, to stop in those projects because they've been stopped over and over and over again, and it's time to move forward with those. Okay, thank you, point of, council members. Um, yeah. I, I have a number of other <clears throat> questions, but I'll defer to other council members. At okay, we'll come back to you, councilman. Um, council member Ibarra. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, um, right now, if we adopt resolution 2020-128, which is item number one, um, that means that everything that um, has been provided to us as far as um, the proposed budgets per department, they'll be approved, correct? Because I, I would like to keep going further and finding more um, items to remove from the proposed budget. Is that, is that correct, Ms. City Manager? Yeah, yes, you are correct, Council Member Abar. With the exception of the $2.8 million, you would actually be approving to um, use reserves until such time that we can either come to concessions with employees, but we would continue to report back to you on that. Okay, yeah, because because um, I think I want to, first of all, thank you for, for the uh, time you gave to us on Monday to go over um, the proposed budget. But I, I, I do have some items that, um, we, would, we should discuss further as far as uh, whether or not we should be funding them for this fiscal year or not. Um, that's based off after the conversations that we had on Monday. And uh, if my count colleagues are okay with it, um, we can pull number one, uh, maybe discuss it further, uh, but I'm not comfortable with approving the way it is. I'll be okay with two, three, four, and five. Uh, and I have a question for uh, the Director of Finance. Uh, approving the budget right now, uh, can we make amendments to those budgets uh, in the next fiscal year, 2020, 2021? So uh, if the council member from the second ward would like to uh, defund or, or or adjust the expenditures in one department, she can bring that up at a, at a later date within the next fiscal year, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, at this time, I'd like to, I'd like to move forward um, with, uh, was it Henry's motion or, or Juan's motion? Um, that we approve the, uh, the the budget for the 2020-2021 uh, uh, fiscal year. Thank you, Councilman uh, Sanchez. Uh, Councilman Charette. Thank you. Um, I tend to agree with my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Ibera, uh, and it's kind of a funny position here to not support item number one, but support items two, three, four, and five. Um, so it's kind of uh, it's contradictory, isn't it, or a dichotomy, or whatever the term is. 
uh, to approve the budget, but then vote again, but not support those or support those other items, but not support the budget. So um, I think there's other areas. I, I definitely believe there are other areas we can be looking at. Uh, it may not happen right now, but I do not support uh, pulling from the general fund tonight and approving this budget as it is. Um, I, I, uh, I do support uh, items two, three, four, and five, uh, but it's kind of moot, isn't it, really? Am, am I missing something? It's really moot. Uh, support those and not support the budget. Can someone help you with that, uh, Paul or somebody? I mean, that's... Yeah. Councilman Charette, we do have to adopt a budget by June 30th. I know we have to adopt a budget. Okay. I, I know we have to, but oh, okay. it doesn't have to have my vote. It doesn't have to have my vote to adopt a budget. And I don't support what we're doing right now, and I don't think we've looked, looked deep enough uh, to make up that $2.8 million, and it's all fuzzy math, if you ask me, looking forward to maybe this or maybe that or hopefully this or hopefully that. And I just think that there are places within our organization that we can make some cuts um, that would make really significant uh, uh, significant numbers. And I just, I have a real problem with, with this. I'm very supportive of a rainy day fund. That's what reserves are for. But I would have been more supportive of starting at $32 million in a reserve fund to help us with $2 million or $3 million than starting at uh, $22 million and taking 2 or $3 million out of it. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to support the uh, item number one, which I think uh, ultimately the other five are, are moot. Correct me, wrong. Thank, Correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, Councilman, for your um, comments. Um, all right. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, Can I do a substitute motion then that we just vote on number one separately from the rest? Will somebody second that one? I can. I can second that. Okay. Uh, that's a substitute motion. Again, support. We'll have discussion on the substitute motion. Councilman Mulvihill. Uh, yeah. Oops. Yes. I'm, I'm on. Um, you know, several weeks ago, I asked the city manager, uh, you know, we, we worked so hard uh, outsourcing so many services, and and yet we're we're facing deficits again. Uh, you know what happened to all those surpluses? Well, I've been doing some studies, and of course the elephant in the room is the police department. Uh, you know the budget right now is they're asking for eighty six million eight hundred eighty seven basically eighty seven million dollars. And I looked over the past budgets of the police department, and uh, for example, you now this year is eighty seven million dollars. In 2016-17, the, the uh, actual amount was only $63 million. So we've gone in four years from $63 million to $87 million. Uh, and the big jump occurred th the very next year in 2017-2018, where the, the current budget was up to $82 million. So it went from 63 in one year, it went from $63 million to $82 million. And again, from there, uh, we're looking at the... Uh, the budget uh, request that we've got today, you know, um, you know, there's been questions that raise, have been raised, and, and uh, Councilman Nichols has talked about performance reviews. You know, what are the performance standards? And uh, um, I get the impression that, you know, we do have a uh, an assessment possibility. That uh, I'm not quite sure whether he favors or not, and it seems to me an assessment of the police department would give us some sort of an idea of performance standards. You know, I, I know that there is successful co-response teams that have been adopted by many cities that would eliminate the use of sworn officers in certain situations that demand conflict resolution, where there's mental health problems, where there's uh, other issues particularly. And I wish that we would take a closer look at those. Uh, I realize that uh, we can't discuss those kinds of changes at this particular meeting, but I think that that's an issue. And I talk about the elephant in the room, $87 million. If we want to cut the budget and we want, are seriously looking at, looking at performance, we really need to look at the police department. Thank you. I agree. 
Okay, Councilman, uh, we're, we're voting on the substitute motion. So just a, a reminder to council members to keep it in perspective here. We have a substitute um, to separate the matter of items. Uh, I'm sorry, isolate item one and then continue on with voting two, three, four, and five. So just heads up, um, council members. And Councilman Nickel, would you like to speak to the uh, substitute? Yeah, what could you remind the council and the public what is the policy on the use of reserve funds as city manager? We, we've enacted a policy. Can you remind us what that is? Sure. And Paul can go over. You have a policy that says you'll have, I believe it's, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, 25% for emergency reserves and your economic contingency. It's overall, your overall um, is a 25 broken down by, uh, I believe it's an economic contingency reserve of 10 and an emergency contingency of 15. Uh, the, the policy in the municipal code or the municipal code speaks to if um, we need to draw on any of those reserves in any given year that we um, come back with a plan to replenish those, the use of those reserves when um, the uh, economic environment allows for such an increase. And, and right now, as we all know, we're, um, we're not in that economic environment just yet. Right, that's in our policy, not in the municipal code. Yes, correct. Right. When you say we aren't in that economic environment, what do you mean we're not in that economic environment? To de to develop a plan to replenish our um, replenish. Our use of yes, sir. yes, sir. We're not but in not, a position. But not right. to use. We're in a position to keep using we're and not replenish. Right. Keep using and not replenish. That's the. No, I, Okay. My, my question, my question is simply, are, does the policy allow, given the circumstances that we confront this year, the fact that we are facing significant reductions in various tax revenues attributed to a pandemic, is the use of those reserve funds more or less allowed under our policy? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. Okay. And then um, you said that we'll be coming, you'll be coming back in July uh, for uh, a, a subsequent report. I would also like to ask um, what, what engagement do we have with our federal representatives? My understanding is there's legislation that has already passed the House and is working its way through the Senate that would potentially provide relief to local government. Do we know the status of that? Are we in any way apprised of what's occurring on the federal side to potentially provide some relief? Yeah, I actually checked with Congressman Aguilar's office yesterday. We, it's, it's, still, it's still in process. There's still a possibility. We're hoping to know sometime between July and October where that goes. As you know, it has to go through a different process of approval, but there is still a chance that the city could receive, I believe it's turned into what's called the HEROES Act, from the CARES Act to the HEROES Act, um, and there is a chance for some uh, some relief of revenue. But Terry, those are restricted funds. They're going to go to something direct. You need to tell well, us. What we know, that's, that's different. We're understanding than what the state is looking at or what we've already received. Those were HUD dollars uh, for CDBG and ESG. This is different. What we're understanding is this could provide some relief to cities um, for revenue loss. Councilman Nickel, does that conclude your question, sir? Yeah, and then just to reiterate, approval of, um, of this motion um, without a, a, an approval of item one, are we able to move forward on any of these items absent an approval of item one? No, we would need to come back to you um, if, if your desire before the end of the year, by the 30th, so you have to adopt a budget. <laughs> As I, hang on one second. As I understand the motion, it's purely procedural in nature. It is purely that we take them out of order, that we take items two through five now, and then we later tonight consider item one separately. Correct. All right. That That's the question. substitute motion. Uh, City Clerk, would you please call the roll on the substitute motion? Yes. Council Member Sanchez? I just want to make sure that this is clear for myself, the public, and everyone else. We are still going to make an honest effort to approve the 2020-2021 budget tonight, okay? This is just to get two through five out of the way, mm -hmm. uh, right? This isn't a motion to adopt two through five. This is a motion to consider to separate. five separately from yes. one. Correct. 
No, which geez. is All a right. shell game because it's it's ridiculous. Councilman, come Council, forward this Council, way. Councilman Charette, you're out of order. No, no the city I'm clerk, we're gonna. Order. You're right. That's this. What what this, what, this, sir, this, what, this, what this, purpose hold, does this serve? Hold on, just a moment, please, Mr. Mr. Sanchez. Just a moment. We're in a roll call vote. Um, members would please cast their vote. And Miss City Clerk, if you take the roll on substitute motion to separate, it has. We've had some discussion. Let's call the roll. It's not just separating, right? It's actually city, voting. For we're not sure what we're voting on. We're only separating. We're only separating the items tonight. Item but number one is a substitute. Are we voting to vote on them? We need to vote. We need to vote for item one separately, and then two, three, four, five uh, together on a separate vote. Let okay. Me, let this, me be clear. Let me be very clear for everybody. The motion on the floor, the substitute motion, is to separate item one from item two through five of yes vote on measure. All it does is mean that we will consider items two through five first and then take a decision on those items. And then afterwards, we will consider item one. A no vote means we will consider items one through five collectively. Correct. There is no action being taken on the items through this vote. Correct. Move for separation. Mr. Sanchez, what's your vote, sir? Uh, yes, sure, why not? All right, Ms. City Clerk, continue the roll call, please. Councilmember Ibarra? Yes. Councilmember Figueroa? No. Councilmember Charette? Councilman Charette, is that a yes or no? It's a yes. Thank you. Councilmember Nickel? Yes. Councilmember Richard? Yes. Councilmember Mulvihill? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, there's a move to separate. So let's uh, deal with items two through five. There's a motion on the floor. If the uh, city clerk would call the roll on the motion by Councilman Figueroa with a second by Councilman Sanchez. Move for approval on the items as staff recommends items two through five. Call the roll, please. Council Member Sanchez. The description is correct from the mayor, right? Yes. Ted. All right. I'm not, I, I want to make sure that everyone knows what we're voting on. Yes? This, this item, to be clear, is to approve items two through five. Correct. Okay. Yes. Council Member Ibarra. Yes. Council Member Figueroa. Yes. Council Member Charette? Yes. Council Member Nickel? Yes. Council Member Richard? Yes. Council Member Mulvihill? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, very good. Let's move on to item number three, a consent calendar. Is there a motion for approval on the consent calendar before us? One, one second, Honorable Mayor. Um, I believe we should now take up item one and discuss item the budget. Item one, yeah. Item one, the budget itself. Well, well, that's um, if you if I, I was trying to let the let it marinate and air out a little bit. I don't think you have that option. OK, why don't we just go ahead and get back into the item? Item number one. Um, go ahead. Keep talking, City Council. It's the items before you. Item number one. I'll move to approve item one for purposes of discussion. Okay, great. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Councilman Sanchez. All right, let's uh, beat it up some more, guys. Keep talking. Is this where we start uh, looking at what else we're going to take out from the budget? It's it's your it's your discretion, Councilmember. That's what we should have done three weeks ago. Exactly, okay. exactly Ted. Exactly. <laughs> Councilmember, uh, do you have anything to add? Or is there yes. any other council member who would like to be recognized tonight? Yeah, let's move to approve. Okay, is there a second? Councilman Figueroa, is that a yes? Call call for the question. Oh, there's not a second on it. Oh, it's, it's nobody. I thought, I thought I moved the item for. Purposes. Well, you move for discussion. If you're if that's a if that's a move. Right, for yeah, approval, I'm moving the item. Move for approval with a second by Sanchez. City clerk, call the roll. Mayor, sorry, just so I'm very clear on this uh, for all council members, uh, we had a motion from council member Nickel to approve item one and right. a second by council member Sanchez. Now, uh, I believe uh, council member Ribara wants to discuss the topic some more, but now council member, Sa Mayor Fertam Sanchez, my apologies, 
has asked for a call for the question and was that seconded by Councilmember Nichol? No, the chair is recognizing the call for the question. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Sorry. City Clerk, go ahead and call the roll, please. Okay, Councilmember Sanchez? Yes. Councilmember Ibarra? No. Councilmember Figueroa? Yes. Councilmember Sherat? No. Councilmember Nichol? Yes. Councilmember Richard? Yes. Councilmember Mulvihill? With reservations, yes. Yeah, the motion passes. The item passes 5-2. We thank our city council members and again, we thank our staff. Um, on to our consent calendar. Um, move, for is there a motion? move for approval by Mulvihill. Hill. With second. a second by Charette. If members would please cast their votes. City, uh, Miss City Clerk. Council Member Sanchez? Yes. Council Member Ibarra? Yes. Council Member Figueroa? Yes. Council Member Charette? Yes. Council Member Nichol? Yes. Council Member Richard? Yes. Council Member Mulvihill? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, let the bell start ringing. We thank our city council. Thank you, um, city council members, for all of your hard work. We've had um, several meetings from May through today, and we appreciate your participation and your time, your dedication to your respective issues. Mr. Nickel? Yeah, Mayor, I, I do believe that we need to um, move forward on a motion um, related to bringing that tax measure back. Um, uh, Ms. City Manager, maybe you can elaborate on, on what we need to accomplish this evening. Sure, and I believe Thomas can help us as well on this. If you wanted to come back to put a measure on the ballot in November, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, perhaps Thomas could tell us what that process would be. I think given we're at a special meeting, we've got uh, an agenda that's specific. I think at this point, the, the only task for council would be to direct staff to bring something back. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I think we've heard tonight at various points through the presentation, general ideas of uh, <laughs> sales tax measures. So we're just looking for a motion to direct staff to bring back a sales tax measure for consideration. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And what I'd like to do is put forward a motion to direct staff to bring back a resolution. And, on and I will definitely I second that and we'll only ask you what would be the soonest. Yeah. And authorizing a ballot measure to renew and increase measure Z at one cent for November, 2020 on July 15th. Second that, and what would be the earliest, the soonest possible to bring that back as well? I believe it'd be possible to bring it back on uh, July 15th. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, take a roll call vote on that, Ms. City Clerk. Um, that's the motion with a second by Councilman Figueroa on bringing back before uh, the Measure Z initiative. Uh, uh, that's the direction of the City Council. If members would please cast their votes via roll call. Councilmember Sanchez? Yes. Councilmember Ibarra? Yes. Council Member Figueroa? Yes. Council Member Charette? I'll vote yes to bring it back and then vote no when it comes back. Council Member Nichol? Yes. Council Member Richard? Yes. Council Member Mulvihill? No. Okay, motion passes 6 1. All right. We thank you, and we'll see that item come before us on July 15th. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you very much tonight, and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you again, City Council members. Thank you, everyone.